I thought we'd start with a nice meme. So just Far Cry 7 meme. I look forward to it. Which you can play as Miles and go on his adventures throughout Kabul. I'm sure you know about Miles, the yes. British nut job he went out there, which um, is just really funny. Like, I can't I can't hate him. It's just too funny, a story. Anyway, but the, uh, the situation in Afghanistan has got worse. So the airport, which the Americans are meant to be holding... Uh, uh, apparently is falling to crap. So uh, on multiple times now, we've seen footage of gunshots going off. This is probably the worst one, which was yesterday, which you can see guys with guns having to fire back at God knows what. Whilst they're being shot at, apparently 12 people were killed in this exchange here. Wow. So we're not sure if the Taliban did it or if it's a false flag from the Afghan National Army or something trying mm -hmm. to make a situation. But the situation there is uh, what it is, which is absolute hell so if we go to the next one there's some more footage of just the the airport you see there's still loads of people and uh all these people presumably fleeing from the taliban and wanting to get out of here because they know that i don't know they're all homosexual or something perhaps which um i'm sure is taking place if we can get the, the satellite photos in the next one up as well just to show the extent of this so this we satellite photos. i believe these were taken before the planes had taken off and people fell off them and you can see just people who look like ants we can click on those photos just to get them up like the, the sheer numbers. Mm. If we go to the, the last one here, you can see the people wow. like right next to the runway, all over the runway, with the Americans sitting around not really knowing what to do because uh, it's a hell of a situation to be in. But um, yeah, we were told by the Americans that apparently the Americans don't have the capacity to get people out anymore. So this is a, a statement from the, the, uh, the Biden administration. We don't have the capability to go out and collect large numbers of people. They've only got the capacity to get small numbers of people, they're saying then. Which presumably means that they've effectively lost control of the airport mm -hmm. with the huge amounts of people or unable to keep the security around it. So that's that situation. So if we uh, if we go to the next one, we can have uh, Millie. Remember Millie? General Millie? Oh, yes. yes. The guy who was uh, so adamant about reading about white rage yeah. because he needs to understand what happened at the Capitol. As if that has anything to do with it, but whatever. He said, There was nothing that I or anyone else saw that indicated a collapse of the Afghan army and this government in 11 days. Wow. Which there have been public reports from intelligence agencies saying it would last 90 days at least. Mm. But then we have whistleblowers mm. who keep messaging Jack Posobiec, for example, yeah. saying this is nonsense. You know, we've been given report after report of them defecting thousands at a time. So I'm not sure I trust him on this. I also don't trust the American government to be honest in the slightest with any of this because it's a big defeat for them. Maybe the Taliban should train up US soldiers instead. Might be the better way around because they seem to be better at doing this. That after two decades, they push back in ten days. Yeah, maybe they spend less time reading about white rage and instead learning about how to use the guns. So checking mm. to see how diverse they are. Yeah, yeah. There has been a statement from a Pakistani journalist that I found particularly interesting though, because we got those scenes from Kabul, but we're not seeing anywhere else in mm. the country this kind of situation. So if we go to this one. So, Taliban takeover did not generate the number of refugees that was expected. No refugee crisis right now on the border, says a Pakistan-based journalist. Hmm. Now, it's hard to trust because Pakistan-based journalist, therefore, is he just a spokesman for the Taliban? Yeah. But I do have to wonder because we're seeing this in Kabul at the airport. That's true. And uh, we're not having any news about anywhere else. Like, why are people not fleeing from the countryside endlessly? into northern Pakistan or into Tajikistan or wherever else, right? It's true because they're not they're not going to get away on an airplane. The Americans aren't going to say, don't worry, jump on. We'll fly you wherever you'd like to go. <laughs> <laughs> Just hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Show me your ticket. Where do you want to go? So, yeah, and we haven't seen a lot of pictures from the borders. So... Hmm. Yeah. Maybe it's true. I don't know. I just had to include it because I. if there's more information, please let us know. But uh, someone has done an interview with some of the boys who got on the plane. You know, on the side of it, mm. who then fell yeah. off because there's not a plane to work. Yeah. So we get uh, this story. This is titled, Family of Boy Who Fell From Military Aircraft Leaving Kabul Explain Why He Left. And the question is like, well, like everyone else there, the hordes of people, presumably they're all fleeing the Taliban because they've all got reasons to be fearful of the Taliban murdering them. Yes. Hmm. A family told Vice World News that they believe the person seen falling from the C-17 in the viral footage was their 17-year-old son. Their other son, who is just 16, is also missing. A relative said, quote, We are really upset that we've lost two. We found the body of one of them, but the other one is still missing. Everyone is trying to run away. It is the fear of the Taliban. They are killing people. They have all left to go to the airport. They want to go abroad. Hmm. Okay, so there's the narrative you would expect that this man was fleeing the Taliban and he's so scared of the Taliban he jumped on a plane and then fell off it. But the rest of this interview makes me wonder. 
The relative explained how the teenager heard a rumour that Canada and the United States would be accepting 20,000 refugees. Which they were, remember? They ended mm. up issuing a statement saying, yes, we're going to take 20,000 in just Canada, along with the 20,000 we're taking, and the 20,000 the Americans are taking, presumably. Probably more, being the Americans. A 17-year-old, the 17-year-old leapt at a chance of being one of the first people to be admitted under the rumour scheme, and, quote, without telling anyone in the house, he took his personal ID and left to the airport. Because this, this is how you get to another country. You jump on the side of a plane, you hold on as it passes continents, and then you just jump off again. But also, he didn't tell anyone in the family. Mm. He just got his ID and left. Why would and he not bring everyone from his family? Bring the whole family? Surely the whole family are going to be at risk if yeah, yeah. you're at risk. Yeah. No, the mum they mention is, is like crying about this and whatnot, as, you know, as she would be if she's lost two of her sons. But the fact that she didn't go with them, there was no attempt to take the family. Mm. It was just these two teenage boys were like, no, nah, we're just going to go to the airport and get there. Why? Because we had a rumour that the Canadians are accepting 20,000 refugees. I gotta be honest, sounds kind of fishy to me. I mean, it sounds like they weren't really fleeing the Taliban because then they'd give a reason, right? Mm. Oh, he worked as an interpreter. Oh, he worked as, you know, supporting uh, the American government or something, right? Yeah. No, instead they say that they heard a rumor about refugees and therefore they were just like, well, I want to go to the West and just hopped on over to the airport and, uh, and then ended up dying. And at 17, he can't even say he's a doctor or a school teacher, which bars him getting in, so... Well, I don't know out there. Maybe, maybe they start younger. I believe like the, the the median age in Afghanistan is 18 because everyone just dies so young because of the, the situation, also the high birth rate and all the rest of it. Mm. So uh, it's also a thing that most people who are alive don't even remember the days before the Taliban. You know? mm. Interesting. So I, I'm not convinced the idea that these guys are definitely all fleeing the Taliban. And that also brings up the question of how are we screening these people? I mean, yeah. not just to screen them to make if yeah. sure if they're a nonce or not, or if they're just yeah. Taliban, but are you actually fleeing anything? Or are you just wanting to come to the West? How are we determining these things? Hmm. Well, I suppose the way we're determining these things is uh, declaring the Taliban an ally. They're no longer yes. an enemy. So this is uh, probably the worst one of the brass interviews that we've seen coming out of all of this. So this is on Sky News. The chief of defense staff from Britain decided to go on and say that we shouldn't call the Taliban an enemy. Even though up until like two days ago, we were trying to kill them all. But but okay. So let's, uh, let's play this clip. I think you have to be very careful using the word enemy. Um, I think people need to understand who the Taliban actually are. And of course, what they are, a disparate collection of tribespeople. As President Karzai put it to me only yesterday, they're country boys. Uh, and the plain fact <laughs> is that they happen to live by a code of honour and a standard, which has been their standard for many, many years. It's called Pashtun Wali. It has honour at the heart of what they do. They are bound together by a common purpose, which is they don't like corrupt governance. They don't like governance that is self-serving. And they want an Afghanistan that is inclusive for all. So I think rather than talking Except about... Except women. The, what? Except women. Um, well, again, I think we have to wait and see. I mean, I don't know what they mean. We can't support the, the way that they treat women. We, we, surely. Well... I think you have to listen to what they're saying at the moment, and I think you have to listen to the facts on the ground. I'm saying they that are have definitely, to abide they by are Sharia definitely, law. Yeah, and I'm not saying that's anything that you and I would approve of particularly. I'm just but I do, that. I, absolutely, but I do think that they have changed. I think they recognise <laughs> that over the course of the last 20 years, Afghanistan has evolved. They recognise the fundamental role that women have played in that evolution. And yes, they, at the moment, will undoubtedly say that they want to respect women's rights under Islamic law, and that will be a Sharia law. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they won't allow them to be involved in government and in education and in medicine and those things that they need them to be involved in. So I think we have to be patient. We have to give them the space to show how they are going to step up to the plate. I mean, I know there's a lot of opium being grown in <laughs> Afghanistan. I didn't think you were meant to take it back with you and enjoy it whilst you're in the UK, but I don't know how else you come to a statement like that. Like the, him talking about, yeah, well, they're, they're Taliban. They're just country boys. You know, they're from the flyover states. They're just good lads. They have a code of honor. They're, they're very anti-corruption. I mean, this glowing endorsement of the Taliban as good boys who didn't do nothing. I don't love how Kate Burley's only response to that was, yeah, but what about women? Like the rest of it, it's just like, yeah, the Taliban are good boys who didn't do nothing. Country boys summer, as John is saying. They're, uh, they're, no, she didn't interrupt that. But she's like, yeah, but what about women's rights? And he's like, no, no, no. Well, they'll respect women's rights under Sharia. Maybe she just wasn't <laughs> expecting so much crap to come out. That makes no sense, the only defence. <laughs> but country boys, I mean, you could have you could have teachers, you could have health workers and country boys, so you could have that as another category. For doctors. For refugees. <laughs> country boys. <laughs> don't, know how, don't know how you clarify that or classify it. Oh, but, boy. But also women rights under Sharia. But uh, has he not on. seen what the Taliban have done? 
uh, to with the Americans, with the Russians before, has a new idea of history that actually they, they may they may come good. They may be a, a good ally for us. Our what? greatest ally in the region. <laughs> Oh boy, but yeah, that's the that's the chief of defense staff for the UK. Which, um, yeah, you have to be very careful calling them an enemy. They're they're our greatest friends now. Also, the idea that they're forming an inclusive government. I mean, it's the stuff of memes, isn't it? I mean, it uh, yeah, there is. Fairly, it, it kind of explains the situation we're in in the UK. Whenever we've got people in leadership who think actually women will be fine, uh, might yeah. be a woman. PM next to Afghanistan. Who knows what they'll do? <laughs> it's her turn. <laughs> anyway, so the um, some Americans might be wondering, maybe because he's doing a public interview, has to be diplomatic or something. Uh, no, no, he's not a politician. He's he's not a diplomat. Mm. He's uh, he's just the chief of staff for defence. He has no reason to be diplomatic. That is, that is his honest views, presumably, as he gives them. But so. if he says it's fine, actually, you don't need to take anyone in. What's the point in having any refugees? If it's going to be a good country, they're going to look after women and the country boys will just make it all good. <laughs> uh, then stay there. You know, I might as well just rename, like, stop calling them the Taliban and just call them the country, country boys. boys. <laughs> <laughs> they should rebrand. Just just the- <laughs> you know what? You know, they've all got Twitter accounts. They should do that thing where you'd be like, yes, uh, I am Mahmoud, quote, the country, country boys, boys. <laughs> Mohammed. <laughs> Is that like a boys band? Oh, the country boys. Coming to a region near you. Actually, yes, because we're taking 20,000 of them. But anyway. So um, what's the Western response to all this, apart from Britain, who's decided that they're the country boys? We have uh, Biden, who's decided that he needs his blanket. He's going home. (laughs) Uh, It's just so depressing. Like, I I know, you know, I'm not pro-Democrat. I'm not pro-Biden. But I must admit, it is just goddamn embarrassing. Like, if I was a Democrat, this would be a rough time to be a Democrat. Anyway, if we get this first tweet up from Jack Posobiec, and you can see the timestamp, uh, 1.25 p.m., he tweeted out, Biden's tell- sorry, Biden telling staff he wants to go back to Delaware. Hasn't been sleeping well this week. Thinks he will be more functional if he stays over at home in Wilmington. Just, I need my bed back. I want to go back home. I don't like this. <laughs> He's currently on holiday at Camp David for days. I mean, remember his press conference? He immediately just left and went back on holiday. So that's that's not good enough. He needs to go home and get his blanket from home. Okay. And uh, this might just be a rumor. Remember, Jack Posobiec could be fake news, right winger. Uh, no. If we go to the next one here, we have uh, 2 17 p.m. President Biden, who has spent the last few days traveling between the White House and Camp David, is scheduled to head to Delaware for a long weekend. That's according to the FAA's website. So he really is going home for a nice blanket. So so this is the biggest failure of US foreign policy for decades, and he's a bit sleepy. Yeah, he's he's, uh, he's tired. He's got to go home. Take a caffeine and just man up. Whilst the Taliban do their press conference and take plenty of questions. No questions. Keep it coming. Press, press, press freedom, open, open government. That's what the Taliban's all about. But Joe Biden, not so much. That's the message being given off. So if we go to the next one. The Taliban are also just mocking him. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is Chinese state-affiliated media, Global Times, tweeting out after playing bumper cars, the Taliban was seen having ice creams in Kabul on Thursday, which some netizens said reminded them of U.S. President Joe Biden, who also liked ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the country boys oh boy <laughs> I also wanted to include in this there's been some rumours about Kamala Harris because I mean what's she been up to the the, the, the soon to be president of the United States yes um, apparently not much she's she's trying to stay out of this so this is a, this is the rumours for him in the inside you will not pin this S on me Kamala Harris chose to hide as Afghanistan collapsed and it says a source reportedly told Kyle Becker at Becker News that Harris refused to be part of the addressing the American people on Sunday. She didn't want to be part of that press conference. Um, I love how they also use Jack Posobiec to confirm this, which is just wonderful. Like Jack is just so much of a truth teller at this point. <laughs> like, really is. Everything is just like, yeah, this is going to happen. And it does. I was like, oh, okay. So Poso confirmed. Kamala refused a request to do a presser today, said she was focused on Haiti, not Afghanistan. Because uh, nothing to do with me, Gov. I'm out of here. This is all your problem. But I read that she basically hadn't been seen for six days. That she's just disappeared. And yeah, she's been called to do these things. And it's great to see I, what the, de- the you've got elections next year, midterms next year. So just a year away. So I, I just hope this runs and runs and really just destroys the Democrats chance of, of getting anywhere in the midterms. Um, and hopefully it'll just be a, a huge wedge between the former vice president and the president elect. I hope so, too. I mean, if there's a silver lining out of this, I suppose it's us being out of Afghanistan yeah. and also the, the fall of Democrats, which would also be nice. So um, there's a certain thing that's still going on, which is 
Strange. Mm. So remember that Facebook banned the Taliban? Apparently YouTube have followed suit and now Twitter is the only one with them on. So everyone's, you know, like Alex Jones, where they banned him yep. from everything except yep. Twitter and everyone's mm. like looking at Twitter. Same thing's happening with the Taliban. I know and everyone's looking at Jack now. Well, the Taliban are still there and um, Twitter's defending themselves. They're, they're not taking this. They'll ban Donald Trump, but not the Taliban. Twitter is the only significant social media platform not to have banned the Taliban, with senior members in the organization boasting more than a million followers between them. Big organization and growing. They've gained 300,000 new followers in a couple of days. So they're... Uh, they're become, popular. Yeah, they're going to get verified check marks soon. <laughs> Unlike Facebook and YouTube, Twitter said it would not bar the Taliban members unless they were found to be glorifying or promoting violence or expressing hatred against a person or group. <laughs> <laughs> have they missed what's been happening <laughs> completely missed the last 20 years also i love it I, it I i guess this means that you can kill anyone you want and you won't be banned from twitter but if you do it on twitter then you'll be banned from twitter yes except that also doesn't make sense because of course donald trump he never glorified the uh capital situation no nope, nope. at all the people walking between the ropes and uh yet the pakistani sorry the uh, freudian slip the afghani taliban <laughs> However, we're glorifying their victory in which they stormed the capital, Kabul, and just became the government. And we're just like, yeah, me and the boys, we run the place now. Country boy summer. But yeah, but they're not, um, we were told earlier, they're not the enemy, so it's fine. Mm. But also there's the question of Facebook and YouTube now, which is, if they're happy to ban the official government of yeah. Afghanistan, why not the official government of Pakistan? Yeah. Or Iran? Or we can keep going, can't we? Mm. No, could go on forever. But there is uh, some good news about the Taliban being on Twitter. Good memes. Uh, some real good memes. <laughs> So this is a lovely story. Twitter frog account successfully negotiates with Taliban to secure the safety of Spanish diplomats after the government falls. So a frog avatar account, a Pepe, a Pepe <laughs> Spaniard has decided to message the Taliban and be like, hey bro, <laughs> don't harm Spain. We hate America too. So they say in here, the Spanish government mm. had seemingly failed to establish a clear and open line of communication with the Taliban, inspiring the owner of a frog avatar account to take action. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I hope they stay on Twitter forever so the uh, the Taliban guy so the tweet here you can see the Taliban guy tweets out in his language that uh, Nashagar's sweet district was completely conquered again no no, no glorification of violence here and then the, the Spanish Pepe responds hello brother please don't hurt the Spanish people at the embassy we are forces in your country by America we don't like them either and the Taliban responds we are human beings we respect each other we don't say anything to foreign troops what? <laughs> it's just, so they're engaging with this random bloke. Yeah, they're just engaging with the Pepe's, the the, the 4chan guys who have made troll accounts. And they're like, yeah, don't worry, bro, we got you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, friend. Can you save our Spanish diplomats? <laughs> don't worry, friend. I'm a friend who... <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> <laughs> so this has inspired more Pepe posting as well, because as soon as he responded to one, everyone was like, right, I'm getting in on this. So we go to the next one. There's another Pepe account who's uh, talking to him. So if we scroll up on this, you can see the conversation. <laughs> so he has this post of people falling from the planes, um, which, hmm. Yeah, and he says here, we thought that today some people lost their lives in search of life because they relied on America without a law. Again, no glorification of violence whatsoever. Mm -hmm. We promise you that you will not suffer any personal or financial loss. Please do not embarrass us. We are your servants. So the Taliban trying to reach out to the... Afghanis mm. on Twitter there. And uh, the, the Pepe account responds with, as you promised, my friend, please no, please need you for fully treat and take care of Spaniards who remain in your country. And the Taliban responded with, okay, okay. And the Pepe responded with, thank you, friend. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, friend. Please take care of the Spaniards. Don't worry, friend. I will. Oh, thank you, friend. <laughs> And this is real? This is real. <laughs> uh, the Taliban are, are, are communicating with 4 channels all day, which is just it, it is amazing. So we go to the next one. There's, there's more of these as well. Like, there are loads and loads of these. This one is a guy, like, pleading for Miles' safety. You know, the English guy? Yeah, he, yeah. Yeah. So you see, he, he writes here, Dear friend of the Taliban, please be very careful with this drunken English foreigner. He can jeopardize the reconstruction plan. And then if you scroll down, you can see the response from the Taliban that is, Inshallah, thanks, dear. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, dear. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, if you know anyone who's trapped in Afghanistan or Kabul, uh, don't contact the embassy. They've all left. 
Make, <laughs> make a Pepe account uh, and message this dude and he'll guarantee your safety and make sure you can get out. Thanks, dear. <laughs> Thanks, dear. Uh, like, boy. Calm down, dear. <laughs> uh, we'll take care of that drunken English foreigner. He's such a cute guy. <laughs> sure. We'll deal with him later. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing. They have actually guaranteed foreigners a safe passage out, wow. which is uh, amazing. Like Miles, for example, he got a Taliban escort to the airport him and a bunch of foreigners from the UN, mm. they got escorted by the Taliban. So maybe, I don't know, maybe he did see the postman's like, don't worry, oh. bro, we've sent guys to get him. And they, they escorted him out and he got a plane and is now back home. He's, uh, he, I think he's in a hotel in Britain having a, having a night. Anyway, so the uh, I wanted to end this section on probably just another sermon of Pakistan de lenta est, because why not? So I thought I'd take this quote. Taliban doing a rape of 15-year-old girls and some people in a particular community are celebrating the victory of the Taliban. This guy is uh, apparently a leader for BJP Youth. So particular communities, have it a guess. I'm going to have it a guess at the Pakistani PM personally, specifically. So if we go to the next one. We spoke about this before. You can see David posting about this, which is that Imran Khan's response to the Taliban victory was that the Taliban had freed Afghanistan from slavery of the disgusting Westerners who had invaded because they were being subjugated by Western culture. Because to be subjugated by a foreign culture hmm. is akin to slavery. So if there are any British people being subjugated to Pakistani culture, they are slaves of Pakistan and are justified in rising up, so says the Pakistani PM. I thought I'd just end this section on uh, just an image of Imran Khan's wedding photo, which I didn't know about, and now I do. <laughs> Look at that. So it's a picture for people listening of him and all the male family members and some women in the background there standing there, and then his wife, who looks like the Ood out of Doctor Who or something, with some red like, shawl covering her entire face for the photo. I mean, it looks like he's marrying a carpet or something. There is no person there. I mean, maybe you can see her hands. I'm not sure. Is she wearing gloves? A good Muslim covering up her hands as well. But yeah. Why do the others not get that? Is she know. the only hot one? She had... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> My wife's too hot to be seen. <laughs> it's true. If you enjoyed this segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can watch the full broadcast live every weekday at 1pm UK time on lotuseaters.com.